It's a difficult uh, day for me today. I learned uh, last um, Tuesday evening that um, my sister passed. My oldest uh, living sister passed. And um, I just kind of remember, like, uh, when we, we, we were together, we kind of like look at each other, look at each other in the eye, right? Uh -huh. And we'd start laughing. <laughs> and then, uh, what are y'all laughing about? Say, hey, that's a woo thing. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> you, know, you wouldn't understand. But uh, I was just thinking that, that, you know, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Yes, but the Lord delivers us from them all. Now, even though my heart is heavy from, from my sister passing, I, I still have joy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because I, I have hope. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if I didn't have hope, I'd be in bad, I'd be in bad shape. Yes, sir. And so this morning when I was, um, <laughs> this, is, this is interesting, how God always orchestrates something. To kind of give you a lift, even if you're in uh, a, kind of like a dark place. Yeah. You know, he just shines a little light in there so that you know that, hey, this, this is temporary. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. This is temporary. And so when I was, um, I was just looking through my notes, and uh, I had uh, come up with a um, pastor and uh, sent me a, a, a text this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just about right after midnight, I get a text. And then this morning earlier, I got another text. I told, and I texted him back. I finally said, Pastor, we got it. <laughs> we will do it. It be decently done and in order. Yes. 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 And so in the midst of all of that, God gave me this message. All right. And... Uh, it might not be for you, but, but you're here. Yeah. So I'm going to let you eavesdrop on what God told me. Amen. Amen. And so maybe if you, if you listen and hear what God is saying, uh, what he said to me this morning, early, uh, maybe it will also help you. Amen. Uh, so giving honor to God and to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to our pastor, first lady, you know, because he could allow anybody to come and preach in his pulpit. Yeah. Right. Because this is the place that God has anointed him to be overseer. Yeah. And so I don't take this for granted. Yeah. Yeah. But I do know this, and, and I had to tell another one of my pastors this. He's anointed you for this, but he's also anointed me to be your assistant. Yeah. Yeah. So don't get in the way of my anointing by having some kind of uh, you know, selfish, or you think I'm trying to get over, or I'm trying to take something. No, no. God has anointed me to be your assistant. So if I do well, you do well. Yeah. Uh, and, and believe me, if God has anointed me to do it, I'm going to do well. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? Right. And so it's the same way about you and your positions. Always remember God has anointed you to do what you're doing. So yes, you do that to the uh, best, to the best of your ability. And, and Martin Luther King Jr. said, if you a, a, street, a street sweeper, be the best street sweeper. You will be noted for being a great sweeper. You know? Because that's what God has anointed you to do. Yes, sir. All right, let me, uh, let's look at our scripture this morning. We you stand for the reading of the scripture. If you can. If not, stand up in your heart. Exodus 33, verses 21 to 23. Exodus 33, verses 21 to 23. An interesting passage of scripture, an interesting event that took place, and I just want to see if I can be of encouragement to someone this morning. Thirty-three, Exodus 33, verse 21, 23. If you got it, say amen. amen. If you don't, just say wait up a minute. <laughs> All right. 
Then the Lord said, There is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you today. Thank you for all your goodness and mercy, God. I pray now that the word that goes forth will touch hearts, God, and no one who hears this word will stay the same. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to talk for just a few minutes on between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> between a rock and a hard place. We're in a world now where it seems like we are adrift in all kind of immorality and chaos and deceptions and we're just thankful as Christians to be have some place where we can go and have some kind of solitude. Mm -hmm. All right. Some kind of place where we can encourage each other. Some place where we feel safe. A place where God's presence is there. Right. And so in this day and age, we've got so many things going on. If you turn the TV on, uh, for very long and you listen to the news, you'll be depressed. Mm -hmm. And you'll be so depressed, you'll wonder, you, you hear one side of the story and that side is totally different from the other side of the story. Right. And then you've got somebody in between trying to reconcile the two and, and you don't understand, at least I don't understand, what either side is saying. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And you say, well, you said this yesterday. Well, I, did, I said it, but I didn't mean it that way. All right. Uh, uh, here's what I meant. Then yeah. the next day, well, I, I said this. Yeah. And you go back and you pull out the, the, the um, you pull the tape on it. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, no, you said that. Well, here's what I really meant. Mm -hmm. okay. right. And so now we're, we're fighting over uh, whether it's wall or whether it's border security, we don't know what it is. We got we got money. We got people out of work because we're holding them. It's it's just a chaotic situation, uh -huh. yeah. and so America now is standing between a rock yeah. and a hard place, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. and we all are in that cliff. Now the key is. Whether well, we are going to be able, whether well, God is going to shield us from this chaotic situation, or whether we're going to be called up in it. Now, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Moses. I want to talk a little bit about Moses. Now, three things that I'm, I'm going to cover, and then I'm going to take my seat. One is integrity. Okay, integrity. The second one is influence. And the third and final one is going to be intercession. Okay, I'm, I'm giving you my points up front. Then I'll come back because I didn't give it to the <laughs> when I came in. I didn't give it to the to the to the back. Okay. Now, when we think about um, when we think about this situation that's going on, Moses goes up. God, he's got the people now. They're out of Egypt, and and God summons him to come to the mountain. So Moses goes up into the mountain, and while he's up there talking to God, um, there's a lot of noise and racket going on back down in the camp. People are beginning to uh, loosen up, and they're beginning to celebrate, but they're celebrating in the wrong way. All right. And on top of that, when you see Moses up in the mountain, you say, well, why is Moses the only one? There's another little group. Well, he has Joshua with him, with him right? Joshua was the guy. That was his protege, and so whenever wherever Moses went, you will find Joshua somewhere close because right. Joshua, you you will recognize that Joshua was going to be the one that God is grooming now to take over, and so what Moses heard, Joshua also heard, All right. and so a lot of times what we don't want to recognize is that when God is really uh, using us for a particular uh, project or event or whatever it is, 
that there's always a protege, right? Because God is an everlasting God. These bodies wear out after a period of time. But there's a protege coming along. And they said to be successful, you have to have a successor. All right. Now, here's Moses up in the mountain. He's talking, to, he's talking to God. God said, what's all that noise down there? Moses, and, 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 and then the next thing you know, God says, no, the people are down there. They're, they're, they're just acting. They're going buck wild. Yeah. All right. The point is that the integrity of Moses put him face to face with God. The integrity of Moses. And integrity is, is two parts. Here's two parts to integrity. One is trustworthiness. All right. And the other one is faithfulness. Can I trust you to do it? And can I rely on you to get it done? That's integrity. Integrity. Intimacy. What you see is what you get. Integrity. Now, a lot of people, we, we say maybe there's some integrity there. But when you look at their whole life, it doesn't spread in, into other areas. Yeah. Right. It's like over here, it's political maybe, yeah. or it's family, but it's not political and family. Right. That's not integrity. Right. Because you're not faithful. And God's word, look, God's word is not a secular word, or it's a spiritual word. Yeah. And so there is no such thing as God's word not applying in all areas of all right. life. It applies everywhere yeah. you go. That's God's word. Yeah. And so no matter what you're doing, where you, uh, what you're going, uh, what situation you're in, God's word applies to that situation. Yeah. Yeah. Mo Moses was a man of integrity. God says, he's a friend. I can tell him what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I just wonder, can God tell you what he's doing? Oh, uh -huh. uh, it, it's, it's, it's amazing how in our lives, that we want God to tell us what he's doing. But if he tells us what he's doing, we'll say, get somebody else to do that. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, because if you, if you tell, if you, if you give that project to me, I may have to move. I may have to change jobs. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah. And so, um, but here's Moses, a man on the run. We know all his background. We know his background. But God chose him. Yeah. I did a sermon one time called um, Late Bloomers. Mm -hmm. You know, late you know the late bloomer, right? Yeah. The late bloomer is someone who comes into their own late in life. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And so I want to just say this to people who think that you you beyond God's use based on your age. <laughs> no. You may be a late bloomer. Yeah. And God can still use you no matter what your age is. Yeah. Now, you remember how old Moses was when God first called him. He was 80 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so God calls him and, and, and when, you, when you start looking at that and you look at Abraham how old he was. I mean these are late bloomers. Yeah. And, and these are the people that we hold up in high esteem. Right. Moses was a man of integrity, and so God could use him. Yeah. Now this, when you're in, when you're on the rock, this rock I'm talking about, I'm talking about the rock, I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. So you're between God and you're between the situation that you're facing. Yeah. So you're between a rock in a hard place. If you're standing on the rock, you're standing on solid ground. Uh, so you can handle the hard place. Now some people don't can't handle a hard place because they're standing on shaky ground. <laughs> you're not standing on the rock. And on the rock there's security. Uh, on the rock there's safety. On the rock there's comfort, there's peace. See, the only rock shelters you from storms of life. Yeah, That's where the rock 
<laughs> comes in to be. Okay. Now, best place is next to God. You are standing on the rock. Now, this integrity that Moses had, and, and I keep coming back to that because God requires integrity. I mean, that's that's a requirement. Because that's who he is. Right. He's a God of integrity. If we could rely on him in all situations, he would not be a God of integrity. Right. Right. He said, my word will never return to me void. I'm not a man that I should lie. Right. I'm a man of integrity. Amen. So if I say it, will I not accomplish it? Yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. So integrity, that's the, that's the first thing. You're honest, you're reliable, you're trustworthy, and you're dependable. Integrity. Yeah. That's Moses. Now, Moses is up. Now we get to Moses' brother, Aaron. Aaron's down with the people. Now, here's where influence comes in. These folks now, Moses being gone for a few days, all of a sudden, they want to go back to the old way of doing things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Give us some of the old gods that we used to have, these little trinketed gods. So now, they go to Aaron. Aaron is the the man that God has tapped to be the projector of the priest. All right. That's where the priest comes from, out of Aaron's, Aaron's line. Yeah. They go to Aaron and say, we want God. Well, now, influence. Mm -hmm. Now, what should Aaron have said? No, we got a God. We don't need all that. That didn't bring us out. Of we, we've been in Egypt 400 years. Then none of these God brought us out. Right, right. Hey, we, we still be there. We waiting on this, this little gold calf to bring us out. Huh? Hey, you remember the story about, about this, uh, this big statue of Buddha fell and fell face down in the mud. Wow. And it took, I don't know, 1,200 or so men to write the statue back. It's a big old carved out statue. Now, just think about that. You got to pull your God up out of the mud. <laughs> No, no, no. We need a God that pulls up on us out of the mud and the mire. Yeah. We don't need a God that I have to pull up out of the mud. Aaron, now, this influence piece I'm talking about is this. The people came to him and said, we want you to make us a God. Well, what did he say? Uh, pull up all your, your gold earrings, and your rings, your bands, whatever you got. And uh, he threw them in the fire and fashioned uh, a gold cap. That's influence. But that's negative influence on the people. Here's Moses leading them in the way of Yahweh, and here is his brother Aaron now uh, making, uh, fashioning a gold cap. Now, how are you going to use your spiritual influence? Right. Are you going to lead them to the house of the Lord, uh, to Jesus Christ? Yeah. Or are they going to have to, are you going to lead them away? Are you going to meet them at the club? Uh -huh. <laughs> Influence. And God gives us influence. And we use that influence everywhere we are. Now, we got to say on some time on our jobs, uh, that little dance joke you told in the break room, man, that's, that really not appreciate it. Or that kind of language, I, 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 I can't tolerate that. It's a lot of stuff I can't even watch because of the language. Right. The language turns me out. I don't even get the plot because when I hear the laugh, I have to turn it off. Because right. right. the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. Yeah. For out of it flows the issues of life. Meaning this, if you let some old crazy crud get into your system, at the wrong time, it will flow out. Now look, right. Kevin Hart now is apologizing all over the, uh, the world for some tweet he made, some or comment he made some 10 years ago about the homosexuality. Okay? Right. But they're never going to let him apologize enough. You can't apologize enough for people who want to accept your apology. Yeah. They want to keep you in bondage. Right. He's going to be in bondage for the rest of his life to that group of folks because they're not going to accept his apology. Right. So what do you do? You, go, you, you apologize to God for anything that you've done. Now everybody else has to get in line. Yeah. Right. Because you already cleared your heart. You already cleared your heart. David said, I, uh, against you only have I seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You only. Yeah. Yeah. And so don't get in that line with God. You're in some other line. 
Don't get enamored. Influence. And let's make sure that our influence that we use is godly influence. That when people see us, they know where we're coming from. Yeah, you know, I got people around me when they when they when they show up, they they, they change. They they they'll, they'll, they'll <laughs> say, where where'd you get those wings from? And they're angels then. <laughs> You know, but did you hear what so and so said? No, I didn't hear because he didn't say that around me. Okay, he didn't. And, and we've got to get to that point where our influence changes the atmosphere of where we are. And then this this final thing I want to talk about, and, and this and this is going to be key. This is the final one. First, we talk about integrity. We have to maintain our integrity. God requires us to maintain our integrity. Huh? Be ye uh, righteous, right, as I am, or holy as I am holy, righteous as I am righteous. That, I mean, be like me, be imitators of God. Isn't that what the Bible Be imitators of God. An imitator is someone who is trying to be like you. An imposter is somebody who wants to um, fool you that he's that they're like you, but they're really not like you. It's only it's only situational. All right. All right. Okay. So be like me, an apostle. Be an uh, uh, imitator. So you're trying to be like God. So you're doing everything He does. Yeah. You're saying what what He says. What He hates, you hate. What He loves, you love. That means you're being, you're being an imitator. You're growing in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So, first, your integrity. Then, your influence. And this final one, and this, and this is key for every church. I don't care where you're located. Uh, I don't care when you got formed. I don't care uh, who, uh, how many people are there, I don't care what color they are, I don't care how tall, how short, how large, how small. This one is the intercession. God requires intercession. The Bible tells us that man should always pray. Pray without ceasing intercession. Now here's, here, here's the example that I want to set before you. Moses, when God says, look at, God says, look at these folks. I can't go with you because if I do, I'm going to kill every one of them. I can't go. Moses said, if you don't go, then just wipe me out because I don't want to go either. I don't want to go anywhere without you. You know what I'm saying? We don't understand that God left us, right, his Holy Spirit All right. to dwell in us. Yeah. So when he says you are never alone, you have his spirit dwelling within you. Yes, sir. So it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things where if God be for you, all right. yeah, yeah. 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 and what can't you accomplish? All right. I can do all things through yeah. Christ who, yeah. but where's that strength coming from? Yeah. Coming from the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is with you, huh? Yeah, yeah it, it's with you. And Jesus says it's going to be with you until I come back. Because that's, that's what I'm leaving. I'm leaving that with you. Huh? And so, this intercession where Moses now began to pray to, Lord, to, to God so that the Lord would not destroy the people and that the, he would come with them. And look at the, look at the, the, uh, the, the argument that Moses made. Now, he didn't make an argument that if you get me out there, these people, they're going to dog me out. They, they, he didn't use that kind of an argument. I'm not, you know, I'm not worthy to be doing. The argument that he used was the argument that most people don't use. If you don't come with us, all of the people around, our enemies, are going to say, you brought us out of Egypt just to destroy us. Yeah, yeah. They're not going to honor you. They don't honor you now. So if, if you come with us, they don't know that you are our God and that you are capable and able and willing to do what
whatever it is you said you were going to do. But if you don't do it, then they're going to say you wasn't able to do it anyway because you weren't able to keep these people together. So why should we come to a God like that? And so when Moses made his argument, God said, I'm coming with you. I'm coming with you. And see, here's what, here's what, um, here is what prayer will do. All right. And a lot of times, when we, 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 don't, we don't pray, uh, it's, it's kind of like an event when we do. Mm. Right? The Bible says we should, uh, we should always pray. Right? Pray without ceasing. Yeah. Okay, when you say, well, I, I got to do some other things. I, I, can't, uh, uh, I can't pray all the time. You know, that's, a, that's an impossibility. Well, is that, is that an impossibility to pray all the time? The Bible said we all keep our minds stayed on Jesus. Well, when you keep your mind stayed on him, well, what, what, are you, what are you thinking? What, what are you thinking? Yeah, yeah. Your thoughts ought to be thoughts uh, of, of godly thoughts, shouldn't they? Yeah. And if you're thinking about Jesus, shouldn't, you, shouldn't it be thoughts of gratitude? Yes. Huh? Yes. And so everything that you're doing and in, in, your, in, in your process of, of your everyday life, and you're living, and, and you are, you, your life represents a godly or a righteous type of living, isn't that a way of praying to God? Right. Saying, thank you for allowing me this opportunity to do whatever it is that you called me to do, and to do it well because you are with me. And so when we pray, a lot of times we think it's just uh, the, the prayers that we've heard prayed, you know, uh, uh, Lord, I, I thank you for waking me up last night. It's like uh, the last night uh, as I slumbered and, and slept and yeah. near death. Uh, you know, the, the, all of the prayers that we used to hear prayed. No, what he's saying is this. When you pray, God will give you wisdom. Yes. You see, God will give you wisdom. Anyone likes wisdom, let him ask God. Well, what are you, how are you asking? You're asking him in prayer. So when you pray, God will give you wisdom. God will give you a constant companion, what that Holy Spirit he has uh, given us. God will bring loved ones home. You have folks that you're praying for. You haven't seen them in a while. God, you, you pray, God will bring them home for you. When you pray, God will restore your family. A lot of us, families are kind of shattered because we're too stubborn in order to ask God to help us. Yes, yes. A lot of times, pride. Broken hearts get in the way. Prayer will mend a lot of that. Okay? And when you pray, God will bring peace back into your home. When you pray, God will heal the sick. When you pray, God will set captives free. When you pray, the Spirit of God will be evident in your life. And God will manifest the fruit of the Spirit in your life. All right. You got to pray. Yeah. When you pray... All these strongholds yes, sir. will be broken. Yes, sir. And so I'm, I'm, I'm one of these persons that says, I, when I looked at Moses and I looked at that prayer and then I looked at God change his mind, yeah. and, and a lot of times we think that God won't change his mind about some things. And, and, and maybe we don't understand all the workings of God's mind and we don't. But I know every time he changes mind, something good happens. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It doesn't get worse. Amen. And so if he doesn't change his mind, it's already good. Okay. And if he changes his mind, it's going to get better. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to pray. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to pray. Yes, Lord. And so I might think it can get better. But, it, but if it doesn't get better, it's already good. Amen. Why? Because he's already told me. I will never leave you not to say that. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all. So we have to pray. And we have to learn that prayer is a continuous. Prayer is a lifestyle. In your toolbox, the most powerful tool you got in there is prayer. Amen. It's prayer. God says, look, if you pray, if you stand before me and you have confidence that I hear you, and you know we have confidence that he hears us, then he says, you have the things for which you've asked. Yeah. I'm going to give them to you. Yeah. And so we have, but one of the things is don't ask um, a miss, meaning yeah. this. Don't ask for stuff that doesn't uh, please God. All right. And one yeah. of the things is that 
That's why we have Bible study, yeah, right? Yeah, so that we can understand the mind of God, the things that, he, that are pleasing to him, and the things that are displeasing. When you read the Old Testament, the Old Testament gives you the character of God. Yes, sir. If you want to know the character of God, it's, it's the Old Testament. And a lot of people say, well, that Old Testament went out and blah, blah. No, it didn't go out. Come That's still God's word. Amen. It didn't go nowhere. All right. right? No, no, it, it didn't go anywhere. That's the character of God. You, you know what God likes. You know what God is. Yeah. yeah. That's huh? good. And then when you start reading the New Testament, you can see the love of God. You can see the compassion yeah. of God. Yeah. Huh? You can see the trustworthy, the faithfulness of God. It's all there in the book. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we pray, we're going to have to start to pray with the understanding that God wants us to pray. Because prayer is a constant communication with God. Who would want to talk to their Heavenly Father? Yes. About the things that are concerning you. Yeah. And so when you're standing between a rock and a hardest place, your best out is to pray. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Now don't think about words.